One of my all-time favorite plugins for Final Cut Pro is Captionator because it makes it so insanely easy to add captions into my videos. However, Captionator, as amazing as it is, does have some limitations in the animation department. Now, I am sure that Brian is planning on adding more animations down the road, but today I'm gonna show you how you can use Apple Motion to add in your own animations, making your videos stand out that much more. Also, if you are a patron, I'm gonna have a project download so you can download this, add it to your Captionator, and it's going to give you so many more animation controls for your video. To make changes to the Captionator project file, go on up into your titles, then locate the Captionator category here on the left hand side. From there, right click on the caption title and select Reveal in Finder. In here, we'll scroll to the left side and find the Captionator folder. Right click on that and select Compress Captionator. This is going to create a backup of our folder so that if you happen to break it beyond repair, it's really easy to reinstall. From there, we can select the Captionator folder, go inside of the Caption folder, then double click and open the Caption project. It's going to bring up this window if you don't have the font that Brian used to make this, so just push OK. From there, I'm gonna push Shift Z so that everything is centered up here in the viewer. We can go on over to the left side and find our text layer. We'll also see that there's a ramp parameter and an over shoot parameter as well as an in animation section and an out animation section. Now it's extremely important that these animations are very very fast. When you're doing speech to text usually the speech is coming out so fast that the words need to get there as quickly as possible. So if we want to have any dynamic animations it's going to be important that we try and keep them within this 12 frame section that Brian has set up. Selecting the overshoot parameter I'm actually going to disable it for now. Selecting our text layer let's go up to behavior behaviors and I'll select text basic. In here we have a ton of different options that are already in Apple Motion for us to animate with. I'm going to go ahead and select arrange in because this is one of my favorites. From there we can go on over to the left and find the inspector and find the controls options in here. So we can actually adjust the animation to our liking using the different controls that are here as well as the different format options up here at the top. But I'm going to go ahead and leave those alone for right now and find in our timeline the arrange in parameter. You'll see that it's far too long for our animation purposes. So let's go ahead and click on the right edge of this and drag it down so that it fits within our 12 frame animation. And if I push play, we can see our animation playing out. So what if we want the ability to change between different animations in Final Cut Pro? Well, that is where rigs come into play. Coming to the top, you'll see that Brian has already added a rig. So we can click on that rig and then come to the left side and find this pop-up button. Go ahead and click that. In here, you're gonna see that we have snapshots one through three through this menu and that is what's going to be available to select over in Final Cut Pro. What I'm going to do is rename this first one to be the overshoot animation. Then we can go to the second parameter and rename that to be arrange in. Now we could have this third rig option, but I'm gonna go ahead and delete that for now so we just have the two. With our overshoot rig selected, we can go over to our overshoot parameters and find the start value. Go ahead and click on this down arrow and push add to rig, then we can go and find our pop-up rig option. Now for clarity's sake, I'm gonna go ahead and rename this rig to just be animation. So if you look at the bottom of the rig, you'll see that it has added the overshoot parameter underneath this edit mode option. Now we still have the arrange in animation happening with the overshoot, so we need to adjust that. Let's go ahead and push on this start button and that is going to allow us to edit parameters and it will automatically add them into this list. From there, we can locate our arrange in parameter and in here we can find this end offset. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag this end offset way up so that's well beyond the length of our animation and that will go ahead and remove the arrange in animation. Then I'll push stop rig edit mode. So if we go back to our animation settings, we can change the overshoot rig over to arrange in. Now we can change the overshoot amount over to 0% so that the overshoot is no longer happening. So we can either select the overshoot animation and that will pop it in just like so or the arrange in animation just like so. So now we have created that pop-up menu. What's gonna be really important is we come over to the left side, click on this down arrow and select publish. So now those animations are going to be available in Final Cut Pro. I'm gonna push Command S to save it, then we can jump on over into Final Cut. Now this is going to work like any other time you use Captionator. You'll go ahead, select your project, we'll go up to the share menu, select Captionator and push next. 
text. Once it has generated the captions, we can change the style over to this Roboto Orange, which is a style I saved, and we'll push Generate. We can push Save, and we can go ahead and look up in the top 10 paid plugins. That's the project I'm working on. Find our generated captions, push Command A to select everything, Command C to copy it, back out, and now we can push Command V to paste it into our project. So if we push play, we can see that all of these have this really dynamic animation built in for us. And if we wanted to, we could select one of these and change it from arrange in over to overshoot. So now this Y is going to have that overshoot animation just like before. Now, one other way we could improve Captionator is by adding a nice little background to all of our text. So to do that, I'm back in Apple Motion and I'm going to create a rectangle by selecting the rectangle tool. We'll go ahead and create it roughly the same size as our text, it doesn't really matter. From there, we can go to our shape settings and we'll disable the outline. From there, I'm just gonna click and drag this rectangle to be under our text layer. And something I'm gonna do is come up to the render options and change it over to alpha overlay so we get this kind of red background, just so we can get a good idea of what our background looks like. After that, selecting this rectangle, we can come over to the left side and change the color. And from there, we need to actually link the height and width of our background to our text. So we can come over to the left side, find our geometry settings, locate the size, and in here you'll see there's width and height. So we can click on this down arrow, add a parameter behavior, and select link. Now I'm gonna click and drag the text into this source object well, and change the compatible parameters over to object attributes, size, and width. So now the width of the text is driving the width of our rectangle. From there, I'll just call it link width, and then I'm going to push Command D to duplicate it. After that, we'll push compatible parameters, object attributes, size, and height, and then we'll change that to be under the target parameters, the object, shape, and size, and height. So now both the width and the height of our text is going to be driving the background size. However, you'll notice that we might need a little bit of padding. So what I'm gonna do is actually find the Y offset here, and we'll just click and drag that up so we have a little bit more size around our text. After that, we can come to the bottom and find our X offset and drag that up so that we have enough scale around our object once more. Now you're gonna notice a problem though. If I move this text layer around, that backdrop is not going to follow it. So what we can do is find our rectangle, go up to behaviors, basic motion, and select align to. Now we can drag our text into that well. And so now anywhere that this text moves, that backdrop is also going to move. From here, we can go into our rectangle under our geometry settings and drag up the roundness so it has nice smooth edges. And we could even publish that as a parameter to change over in Final Cut Pro. We could also go to the style options and publish this fill color. And finally, we could go over into the properties and publish the opacity. So now that we've done that, we can push Command S to save it. And again, we could regenerate our captions inside of Final Cut Pro. So I'll go ahead, select everything, push Captionator. Then we can change the style and I'll go ahead and replace the old captions. We'll jump inside of here, push Command A to select everything, Command C to copy it, and we'll push it and publish it over to the main timeline. And so now all of our titles have this nice background. I'm very lazy when it comes to animating in my videos. Hopefully this video is helpful to you. If it was, consider pressing that like button. Also, you might be interested in this video where I show you my top 10 favorite plugins for Final Cut Pro in 2023. With that being said, thank you so much for watching and I cannot wait to see you in the next one.